We are in the conservation genetics lab at Denver Botanic Gardens, um, and we can really do all the genetic work that we need to do for our various projects here in this space. So the first thing we do is we take the plant tissue, um, which has been dried in silica gel, um, take it from the field and put it in these envelopes, um, and then straighten to silica gel so it desiccates the tissue. So it's going to end up looking something like this, with the leaves and the stems and everything. And then we would just take a small amount of tissue and then place it into a test tube. We have 453-ish samples um, over 11 populations. So then when we get the tissue into the test tube, we would label each tube um, so that we know what tissue is contained within. The tissue has been ground up basically into a fine powder. So we'd take the, the original sample and then we'd put it into the bead beater. Once we have these all powdered and um, they're all beaten to a pulp, we are ready to start the DNA extraction. So for a DNA extraction, we have all of these liquids and detergents and salts and various things that are eventually going to end up with us having tubes of DNA. Okay, so that is all of the DNA. And then once we have that, it goes in for storage into the freezer. Like so. There's a, these are 96 wells. There's 96 holes in each one of these plates. So we would put samples in each one and then, of course, have a negative control. So then this is our hood. It, so this is where we would mix our PCR reactions, which um, basically what we're doing is taking our sample of DNA, mixing it with a cocktail of various um, pieces and parts of DNA and things that will facilitate us to make new copies of whatever DNA sample or part that we want to study. Once that's done, we would run the PCR reaction, which is done on these machines. Um, they're called thermocyclers or PCR machines. They're um, programmed to specific conditions for each reaction that we're running, so different temperatures, different lengths of run times. We heat up the DNA so it falls apart, and then we cool it down so it comes back together, and it does it multiple times, making millions and millions and millions of copies of the portion of the DNA that we're looking for. These are PCR charms. They make it work better for reasons unknown to man. We have a, an agarose gel here, and um, it's basically a gel matrix which allows the DNA to pass through at different speeds based on the size of the DNA. So what we would do is we would add a, just a small portion of the sample the dye that we have, along with what's called a ladder, which has known sizes of DNA fragment on it so that we can compare our fragment sizes with the known fragment sizes. So, and the reason we do this is because DNA has a charge on it, so this is running from negative to positive, and the charge is actually what's pulling the DNA through the matrix. This machine has a UV light in it that is what fluoresces the DNA. On this computer, we have this program called GeneSnap, and um, this is this is our DNA. This is an actual picture of Corospermum. This is one of our primers, and the primer is called 841. So that's just the the tool that we use to amplify one part of DNA. So here is our original gel image. Then we have this other program called Gel Compare um, and what we do is we load all the images into this software. We tell it where our rows of DNA are or it detects it automatically also. Then we go through various steps. We tell it what the ladder, what these fragment sizes are and then detect the bands throughout the gel. So then it lines up all of those bands, and then we can make comparisons. The individuals within a single population are grouping together, which is what you would expect biologically. And then this is a principal coordinates analysis where each population is mapped as a separate color. So these here that are all grouping together here, 
are also all grouping together in this image. And the two analyses are complementary, which is nice.